Hey Nappers, it's me, Wild Neptune. This video gonna go over the Headhunt event that is coming out in about a week when this video posts. If you would like to see more content like this or want to support the channel, a like, comment, and or subscription would be greatly appreciated. Anyway, thanks for watching, and now let's go. So in front of you should be the full list. I have five tiers, including best, the best overall units, great, very good units that can be useful in a lot of situations for your RTA needs, good, units that have their spots but a little bit harder to pick right now, niche, units that you can occasionally choose and feel really big brain when you pick them, but more often than not, they're not that great, and don't, you should not pick these unless you already have basically everything above them. And finally, we have the can't tier because you can't pick these units. So the tier list is comprised in a way where I understand that not everybody picking from this headhunt right now is climbing this current season. So I've taken into account historical power, how strong they are right now, and how strong I think they'll be in the future, and overall how good they are for a average account in World Arena as this list will be very RTA focused. I'm going to go through them as they appear on my hero list in game because I actually don't have all the heroes so for me it's just easy to do it that way. Make sure you have the list open yourself so you can uh, check back and forth on where they are. Anyway, let's get going on to the first hero. So what I'm going to do is go down the list right here. I'll give some comments on how they're used in World Arena. I will also give some build advice and overall how you want to go about uh, the unit in general. The first one we have is Conqueror Lilius. And Conqueror Lilius, ever since she was released, has been one of the most oppressive heroes in the entire game. Enough things that counteractor have come out that are good enough where she's not quite the top 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 tier unit anymore but she is still in general for the average player going to be one of the best units that you can pick up because her s3 which is uh totally busted aoe vigor is extremely nuts coupled with the fact that it's extra turn you have to provoke here and a uh, guaranteed dual attack on the s1 which a combo with a ton of other units is just very, very powerful. Uh, very hard seeing this unit becoming bad anytime soon. It used to be that you would have to build it with as much speed as possible, like 300 plus in a lot of cases at higher rankings. However, these days with the meta being a lot slower, it is possible to get by with slower ones. Maybe not this slow. Uh, however, she is a pick that is sometimes still available later on in drafts and if you need that little extra say debuffing or maybe a little bit of a support aggro push, Conqueror Lilius can be a decent pickup for your account. Keep in mind that she is available in the Moonlight Blessing Season 2 Fallen Land, so if you haven't done that yet, she is available there. Kisei is the next hero and mine is not geared as you see and that's because, well, she's not very good. Uh, unfortunately, Just Kisei has never had a spot in World Arena, like, ever. Uh, she was experimented with, of course, for a couple of reasons, and I would say that she needs some sort of overhaul before she becomes viable, like, ever. Now, her issues are that her base speed is pretty bad, and she requires too much setup to do what she wants to do, where other users can just do what she does, like, better. Um... And that's really where she is. She's more of a unity pick for like waifu reasons more than anything else, but I would not recommend that you pick her up. Lionheart Sermia is the next hero we will look at, and she has two builds, uh, Lifesteal and Destruction. Lifesteal uses Proof of Valor, Destruction uses Golden Rose. Both are viable, um, slightly different in terms of how they function in terms of like your compositions and stuff like that. The lifesteal build will be more of like a dual DPS type thing. Well, the destruction build you can actually use as a solo carry DPS sometimes if you need to. Uh, her gear requirements are very high, unfortunately, for a lot of people. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, it, it's just what, what it is there. 
Uh, she's really good right now in the current meta because of all of the dual attacks and counter attacks and stuff like that that are going around. Um, just be aware that she's really weak to things like um, unbuffables or like silences and stuff like that after the fact. So if she procs her passive and then she gets silenced or like something like blinded, unbuffable, etc., etc., uh, et defense break especially, uh, that could also be a bit of an issue for her. So not the end all be all of a unit like we thought she was after her buff. However, she is a very, very strong pick that you should consider. Little Queen Charlotte is next, and I would say that she's in an interesting spot right now. Uh, when you can pick her, basically uncontested against a dark team like the uh, MLU Fiends and stuff like that that are running around, she can be very, very powerful. The problem is, is that right now it is very difficult to actually guarantee that you get off a good S3 um, at an ample time. On paper, again, she seems really, really good in the meta. However, she's a little bit too hard to actually utilize right now. And that's really been her case for a while now, where she seems really, really good. And then you go into a match and you see why she's just hard to use. So she really has a few builds. Um, some of them are no speed at all, where you just run like all like all damage stuff with some bulk. You have mid speed ones like me, where you want to make sure you get NS3 off, you know, relatively fast. And then you have the builds that are faster, and you run Tachi instead of Hellcutter, because um, Tachi gives the attack buff, and she scales more off of her attack, so that's also pretty powerful. However, not a lot of people have multiple Tachis to use, and there's another unit a little more important that has Tachi we'll get to in a bit. Bellion is our next unit we'll look at, and right now, despite her placement on the tier list, I would say she's not that useful at the moment because Cleave and Aggro are not as prevalent, and Bellion is very, very strong against them. Also, Spectre Tenebria is not as used right now either, so Bellion also suffers too, and Doing AoE a lot is pretty dangerous in this current meta, especially with all the counter attacks like LRK and stuff running around also. However, Bellion does something on her passive, which is stop soul generation, just stop souls in general for the enemy team. That is so strong that she will always basically be here on the list because when the day that comes, and it will come, that cleave and stuff like that is good again, uh, Bellion will be there to protect you from that. She has two builds, Injury and Counter. They both function pretty, a little bit differently. Counter is better against Cleave. Injury is better for a general purpose build. Uh, pretty low gear requirements also. Moving on now to Last Rider Crow. Uh, Last Rider Crow is one of the strongest knights in the game. And that's saying something because the knight spot is very stacked. At least as far as like knights that hold Warriors generally go. Last Rider Crow is really good because there's a lot of AoE right now, like I said. So MLU Fiend, pretty good against MLU Landy and the like. A nice anchor overall. Now, it should be mentioned that he does have weaknesses, like he does instantly die to Gala Lilius, who's a popular counter pick. Um, buffles and stuff too really hurt him, so AOL is particularly strong against him also. Keep in mind too, again, the knight slot is very stacked. And Undone Knight Arrowell, which is a 3-star knight, is basically the best unit for RTA in the game right now, in my opinion. Uh, so you might have a little bit of a redundancy there. However, his S3 doing his uh, insane damage overall for a knight is a very nice thing to have. Uh, you can build him tanky than this, but a little bit slower, like drop the ER if you want to. A very flexible unit too in the ways you build him, just as long as you have a decent health pool. Specimen Says is next. He's a meme unit, I would say. He's fun to use, but not good, unfortunately. Once in a while, you might be able to catch your opponent off guard by picking him up, but he's not going to be a unit you use that often. He, like uh, Judge Kisei, he requires too much setup to be good. He He's too reliant on things going well for you. So a very win more unit, actually. He actually has a number of different builds that people have used, so speed set, counter set, uh, lifesteal set, um, and the like. 
you actually don't really need a lot of um, damage stats on him. This damage is actually a little bit too low, but this is this kind of gear, gear I toss onto him. Uh, it says, not a unit I reckon picking up, but he is a fun one to use. Spirit Eye Selene. So, Spirit Eye is maybe the hardest unit to gear well um, on this list. Like, this gear is okay. It's not amazing or anything, but people can do like much, much better uh, than what I have here. Uh, she is one of those things where in Guild War and stuff like that, she seems really, really good. And more recently in World Arena, she's been kind of used as uh, like a spicy um, MLU Fiend counter sometimes because the meta, again, is slow enough where you can get by with like slower builds and still have her be somewhat effective in the meta. Just be careful, you can't really draft her if the enemy has like arrow well and stuff like that. So you do have to be prepared for that, more of like a last pick. Um, very hard to utilize, I would say. More of a big brain type unit. Uh, not really new player friendly. Uh, she also has a speed build too where you go faster and you use like Secret um, Art Storm Sword, uh, but that's more for anti-cleave, I would say, so not quite as effective against like the slower tank down type strategy. Astromancer Elena. Uh, Astromancer Elena is more of a flag arena unit. Uh, she has been used before in some cleave, you know, mild success, I would say, not that popular. She does basically require Unseen Observer as her artifact, is basically a must-have for her. Um, speed Torrent is the way to go. You typically want to go between like, I'd say like 220-ish to like 240-ish speed. Seems to be the baseline that you want to have. Um, not the hardest gear requirements overall, but definitely an interesting unit. Now you might think that, well, her uh, passive where she stops counter and duel and stuff like that uh, is pretty good. And you know what, maybe if she did other things also, besides just kind of stand there in slower fights and just have this, she'd be okay. But she just doesn't have enough impact besides that to be really used against stuff like ML Landy or, or ML Fiend. Commander Pavel is next, and this is the unit I recently got. So the gear I have of him is kind of bad, actually. His best in slot is Duck Noxus for the artifact but I don't have that, so I just have this wall of order I've casually here at plus 30. Yes, you just want to have him super damage uh, overall, like 150-ish speed I think is a good spot for him, used as a, a big burst in your cleave teams, obviously. Uh, a unit right now that, again, is paired a lot of the times with Astromancer um, Elena in things like Flag Arena, and also with other like AoE uh, attackers in uh world arena for your cleave team so if you cleave he's a nice pickup to have otherwise um, he's not gonna be that useful for you faithless lydica is coming up next and she's also a unit that is relatively difficult to build in my opinion she really has three ish builds one of them is super fast speed like 300 ish one of them is going to be a like like a mid-ish speed unit like this one with some damage and effectiveness so like a mixed build and some builds have like full damage like some builds have like like less damage and more effectiveness overall this really depends on how you use her at the moment i will say that at the moment she's not really that great she's kind of difficult to draft overall this um, even in this slower meta now when you can pick her and you know that she is going to outspeed the entire enemy team usually as like a final pick she, she can be very very strong um probably a force band in that case she needs guiding light as her artifact you can kind of copium and use um elegia candle which is Knuckles artifact this one right here for the defense break uh, but Guiding Light is just so versatile and so powerful that it is hard to not use this one. So finally, not finally, but next we're going to have Sage Ball and Sazan. Uh, Sage has been used as a anti-cleave um, ever since his changes like a, a long time ago. Uh, so high speed, high ER, usually with Bastion, and he just try to sleep the enemy team because of his passive push here. His gear requirements are relatively mediocre, I would say. Um, it can be difficult to get him with the necessary speed, bulk, and ER that he needs on his kit. Cleave, again, is not really that great right now. However, 
I will say that even before Cleave stopped being really good, he stopped being used a lot, and that is because a lot of Cleave teams started uh, drafting Aiden pretty early on, and Aiden counterattacks, and he, she pushes up, and you know, Sageball can miss, and Aiden can like S3 somebody, right? So it just becomes a lot less viable to use him. And now with units like, say, a lot of Klee teams were first picking Emo Landy as like an anchor, and Sage can't sleep Emo Landy, it becomes a lot harder to use him right now. So even though he had his place and was for a time one of the strongest anti Klee options in the game, he has since been kind of pushed out by the way that Klee adjusted. Um, not to him, but just like naturally the progression of the playstyle. Silverblade Everminta, uh, well, she is like almost, she is almost a good unit, I would say. She is like so close to being like completely busted, in my opinion, and what would make it busted if a strip happened on her S3. Now, that's probably too good. Um, a full strip into like a stun and burn on an AoE is probably like too strong of an ability. But you know, that's like one of the things that would do it. Silver Blade at the moment is just like, it's just a PvE hero for um, one fight in Nightmare Lab, and that's basically it. Not somebody I would really recommend that you pick up uh, overall. Solitaria is going to be the next unit we look at, and Solitaria here. Basically, you just want to have like high speed, decent bulk, and then a combination of effectiveness or and ER. So some people run like all effectiveness, no ER. Some people run like no effectiveness and all ER. It just really depends on how your gear is. But your speed, in my opinion, is your most important uh, stat. Her best in slot is Fairy Tail for a Nightmare, in my opinion. You can also run Abyssal Crown if you don't have this limited artifact. Uh, gear requirements, not that bad actually. Um, this gear is not really that great, actually, um, but you know, just try to get that speed marker and you're good to go. Soap and Sage. So, Soap and Sage is a interesting unit where she should theoretically be very good right now because there are a lot of like solo DPS like carry teams in the meta at the moment and Soap and Sage is really really good against those teams, but for whatever reason, she just seems to be like lacking a tiny bit here and there that stops her from being a top tier unit. Basically requires lifesteal plus immunity on her kit um, and therefore kind of difficult to build. Her best in slot in my opinion is Chatty. You can get a Chatty from doing the uh, Halloween side story in the Book of Memories. If you are an older player, you have access to two of them. Um, if you're a newer player, unfortunately, you can only get one of them, which I think is kind of lame, but, you know, there it is. Uh, basically, traditionally has been really, really good against Spectre Tenebria uh, overall, and again, in those solo DPS carries, just be careful that if the enemy team is, like, very aggressive, um, she's not that good. Also, very weak against things like unbuffables and and debuffs and stuff like that. Also, just be aware of that, where things like chip damage that just break away her uh, focus meter can really hurt her also. Make Chloe. So right now, I have heard somewhere that a lot of people are drafting Maid Chloe. Now, I have not personally seen these people, but people tell me it's happening. The uh, Maid Chloe uh, is interesting. Uh, this is an older build, more for like past meta, where they had one have more ER. I think the current build right now is actually more bulk and less ER. Maid is one of those heroes where, yes, ER is kind of a joke stat, I would say, but having like a passive that gives your whole team ER, and then couple this with like say Shamadras to give even more ER is kind of a busted thing in the right circumstances. And AoE attack buff and revive is always going to be good in most cases unless another unit gets buffed. And you know, we'll talk about that too. Bell of Light. Uh, speaking of reviving, Ruel used to be one of the most busted units in the entire game. Basically a very good anchor for your um, healing and protection. Right now, she, and for a while now, she's been too slow to um, use in the current meta, uh, or the last meta, or the meta before that. Um, so, so yeah. She did get a buff recently, a very small buff. In fact, it was a buff that did something 
where I always I already thought she did it in the first place. Um, so yeah, you probably should not pick her. Uh, you know, so like chipmunk. Apoc Ravi, how the mighty have fallen. Um, Apoc is a unit where you, I had to be very careful in saying if she's good or bad or not because every time we thought she was dead, right, like a bad unit, she has come back with a vengeance a little bit later. Something happened, the meta shifted, people found new builds for her, and maybe that'll happen again. But she has been taking a lot of hits recently as she is just very difficult to use because in this very like tanky meta, she has a hard time dealing with other threats and her injury on the S1 is not quite as impactful as it was before. And also units like Emil Shu basically like negate her completely. So there is also that to keep in mind. Um, mine would be geared if I had an artifact to put onto her, which I don't at the moment. Um, but her gear rank is not that bad overall. But with really good gear, you can get pretty insane Apox. Uh, so destruction is probably the most common, um, like good build overall. But people with her on counter also, um, speed stat, you don't have destruction gear. So a lot of options. Orvis is my next unit. And mine's not geared because I actually don't think he's that great right now for World Arena. He's a little bit too gimmicky and hard to use, I would say. Even in this kind of slow meta, if the enemy team drafts like a really good DPS that you cannot ban, um, Dora Corvus just dies, right? Um, you can do so much in order to try to ensure that he gets his S3 off in time. But if you can't soul burn it, or if you have um, a, a little bit too much of a delay between your second soul burn, it doesn't really matter. Dork Corvus, I think, is still just a Guild Wars unit. Um, and that's really it. Not that great for World Arena, and really hasn't been for a while now, actually. After his buff, people were like, oh, he seems really, really good now, at least usable. And usable is a good word, I would say. Designer Lilibet is next, and I would say she's in a kind of sim similar position to Bellion. Because Cleave and Heavy Debuffing is not really that strong or that prevalent right now in World Arena, Designer Lilibet doesn't really have as much of a spot right now. Now, Death Dealer Ray is getting buffed soon, and Designer Lilibet is probably the best um, counter to Death Dealer Ray in the entire game. Also, there's Fumir, and if Fumir happens to be, like, used at all, then Design of Lilibet also probably one of the best picks against Fumir also, as she can just auto-cleanse with her passive and everything, and just kind of go to town on her. Her gear requirements are, I would say, um, unexpectedly high also. Like, this is actually pretty good gear that I have under her. Her best slot is probably Golden Rose, Although some builds will have Sigurds, um, some builds just for anti cleave will have things like Portrait and the Light Draco Plate is also a viable option to have too. Um, a unit, again, not used that much right now, but has been an important unit um, in the past and might be again in the future. Speaking of units getting buffed here, Low Crescent Bologna is one of the other units that will get buffed pretty soon. So they have, I would say, three builds. Destruction, Counter, Lifesteal, and Speed. You know, I, I guess Speed and Destruction are kind of similar to each other. Uh, I think that right now Counter is best in slot, but post buff, I think that all the builds will be kind of viable, but I think Lifesteal is like a little bit at the more copium end in my opinion. Now, she's a unit that you do need to have a Psychic Scythe for. If you don't have this artifact, you might as well not use her at all. Um, so really strong right now in the current meta and will probably be even better um, when she gets her buff, I would say. It's debatable, but I do think the buff will be in that positive for her. I just want some to have good bulk, some like decent damage also. Uh, post buff, you want more speed. So I think right now you can get by with like 160-ish speed, I would say. But definitely want to go like faster for your post buff um, LCB builds because of the decreased cooldown on the S3. A pretty difficult unit to build overall because she always crits due to her passive, which means she's really, really good against like things like Amolanti teams and anything that has anti crit like Senya and stuff like that. However, it also means that you want no crit chance and it's not always easy to get gear with no crit chance on it. 
Speaking about having no crit chance, you have martial artist Ken, another unit that, like LCB, you really want to have this Sigurd Scythe. Again, if you don't have this artifact, you might as well not even use the unit. So, Martial Artist Ken was one of the two big winners of the last buff pack, the other one being Moon Bunny and Ammo 4 Star. And Ammo Ken, like LCB, is another unit that's pretty difficult to build. I would say that he has two builds, Lifesteal and Destruction. I think that Destruction is better overall. However, there have been instances where Lifesteal has actually saved me and won me on um, different fights. So I guess it really depends on your use cases. I do think that my damage on my build is a little bit lower than I want it to be. I, I guess I do have the pen set, so that does help me um, overall. Uh, just use basically the best gear that you can on him for a build. Um, even though I do say his gear requirements are pretty high, you can get by with like kind of prepared MO cans. And if you pick him in like the right spots, he can still do a lot of work for you. Media Cowrick is another unit, and he's one of the, uh, I think he's the second unit that we have that's been at the highest tier, because the other ones I think are a little bit farther down due to, due to alphabetical order. But Media Cowrick, the best cleanser in the game. The, and this is because his passive, but he will automatically uh, cleanse any debuff um, one by one turn if he has his S3 available, which means let's say you try to stun him for one turn, you know what, doesn't matter, he's not stunned anymore, then he can S3 and cleanse everybody else. He also has a pretty big barrier on his S2 and a zero push on his S1, which is very nice. His gear requirement is not that bad, he's going to have some high health and some good speed. Um, I chose ER as my bonus stat, but you don't have to. Some people go effectiveness, some people go damage, some people just try to get as much bulk as possible and ignore these other stats too. Just depends on how you gear roll and your playstyle too. Draze is our next unit and he is in a weird spot where because of MO Landy and her anti-crit, he's not as useful sometimes because, you know, that 50-50 in hitting the the unit you want to or not with the crit is pretty annoying actually. Now, as a benefit, he also cannot be crit, so you don't really lose that much except for like all the damage by um, not critting. But you know there is that factor too, and I guess also you can wrap around with the S2 and strip off some of the buffs also on the second go around as long as he doesn't get knocked out of his invincibility. Tachi a limited uh, five-star artifact is his best in slot. Uh, after that, I say portrait, which is a limited four-star artifact. Some people have run Azure Comet, which is a limited five-star artifact. Um, yeah, so a lot of his good artifacts, unfortunately, are limited ones. Uh, you know, that's just really how it is, unfortunately, with him. I would say that you want to get as close to 260 speed as you can with enough damage just to try to one-shot all of the knights and stuff like that that are in the game. Uh, he is best paired with Architect Laika, a unit we'll get to in a little bit, where the 1 2 combo has made it so that one of them is a force ban and you basically get to nuke a unit for free. Uh, again, not as used right now because things like Ammo Landy, but has been a powerful unit traditionally ever since her buff. Okay, we'll move on to Fallen Cecilia, and Fallen Cecilia has, well, uh, this is greatly to do with the fact that, again, the knight spot is very, very, very strong. FCC doesn't quite do enough to justify picking her over LRK or over something like, say, AOL, Yolha, and the like. In addition, in addition to that, she is quite weak to anything that's anti-barrier, which is right now not in, really in the meta right now, but if something like DJB or like something like that ever came back, then Fall Cecilia is basically dead again. Um, also, there's a lot more anti-dark tech than there is anti-light tech at the moment. So Fall Cecilia, well, a not a bad unit, right? She's just like overshadowed by other units that do her role. Arbiter Mildred is another unit that has fallen off a lot. Um, basically now, like a PvE farmer, sometimes you can use him in cleave. I actually think he's a better anti-cleave than he's a cleave unit, um, in my opinion. Pretty easy to build, actually. Um, just 
not that good, more of like a legacy meme. Um, Remnant Violet is my next hero I will show you. He is basically like slightly worse Aiden, I would say. Um, has his spots, very infuriating, I, I, I would say. He dodges, he doesn't dodge, stuff like that. If you hate Aiden, you'll hate him even more. But as terms of like a oh crap like unit to pick as like a carry for you, he is not that bad, especially when you pair him with someone like C. Lilius. And also, there's not a ton of C. Lilius right now. Like, I mean, there's a lot, right? But not as much as before. So he's like a little bit safer to pick too. And if the enemy team is just like things like Euphine, like maybe more AoE, like he's okay into something like Lionheart, into Landy too. Like probably like generally favorable matchups, but you know, people just don't like living on the edge, which is why you don't really see him that much anymore. Uh, Lifesteal, basically a requirement for him, I would say. Best in slot is Shepherd of the Hollow, of course, if he can have that. Uh, Crit Chance imprint, pretty busted. Bright Witch Isaria is the third unit we're going to have that's going to be on the top, top tier. And this is actually one of the units that I pre ban um, and I had pre banned her since the preseason for this season. Now, in a pretty recent match, I unbanned her just to see what it was like, and I immediately regretted it. She is, since her buff, um, her most recent one, she has been an incredibly powerful unit. And that was in like a fast meta. Now we're in a slow meta, and she's still very, very good. I cannot foresee this unit ever being bad ever. I think this is going to be one of the safest picks that you can have for your account if you're concerned about World Arena at all. Generally not that hard to build, I think. Uh, some people have no effect in this and just all damage. Some people go faster, some people have, you know, get, sure, S3, you have ignore ER Soul Burn, but sometimes you can't always Soul Burn, it just really depends. Her S2 makes it so that she can have an increased hit chance, hit those evasion characters like Aiden. Uh, unbuffable defense break on AoE, really busted, including the strip. Uh, also, with her immortality on the S2, coupled with the fact that she's a ranger, she's guiding light, makes it very, very hard for a lot of teams to actually deal with her um, efficiently and stuff like that. Also, the fact that she has an anti-revive on her kit also makes it really good against things like Maid and stuff like that. Just a hard unit to deal with that does a lot for aggressive teams and to stop those slower, tankier teams in their tracks because you're not really tanky once your defense broken. Pirate Captain Flan, uh, an interesting unit where she, when she is picked, like uncontested, she is very, very strong. However, it has become more difficult to pick her in a lot of um, cases as people are just drafting naturally in ways that where it's kind of good against her. Now, I don't think it gives requirements that are that difficult overall. She really only has two builds, I guess maybe three builds. One of them is like, like no bulk, all attack, high damage. Some have like 300 effectiveness or whatever, right? Or you have more like mixed builds like mine. She does require to have this limited artifact here at plus 30 to function, unfortunately for you guys. Now, there is a custom banner right now where you can pick this up with uh, the Summer Iceria if you need to. Art Demon Shadow. So, Art Demon Shadow is basically now just worse Nyquil, and that's unfortunately what it what it is. Uh, again, like uh, Vendid Violet, a very infuriating unit. Uh, when she works, she's completely busted. Seems like the best unit in the game. When she doesn't work, she's like worthless, uh, and that's really where she is right now. So, I would actually say your requirements have become over time a lot harder because you want like that ER, some effect like overall and high bulk, more bulk than this, more ER than this too. So, you know, that's really where she is right now. Spectre Tenebria. So Spectre is one of those units that for a long time was seen as like one of the best MO5 stars in the entire game. Uh, that probably is still true, but in World Arena recently, she has not been a top tier pick in my opinion, and honestly, her win rates overall show that. Now, I do think that the you should not take the win rates of the units at face value, but it does tell some things. Now, I do think that my build right here is a little bit outdated. I want to try to get it like a little bit faster, maybe like 210 speed um, overall, but this is typically how you might see one in the game. She's one of those units where 
if you can pick her and the enemy doesn't have a good option for her, she has to be banned. And she can be really good against that. Now, also, there are a lot of counter-attack units too, like um, Emil Ken, Landy, and stuff like that also. And she seems like she should be good against stuff like that. She's, she is good against Emil Ken, but things like um, Emil Euphine and Emil Landy can just kind of out-pressure her in a lot of cases, which kind of also hurt her quite a bit. She is, though, pretty good against um, Nakwal, so that is also a consideration you might want to have. Top Mono Lulica. I think out of every single unit we'll see right now, Top Mono Lulica is the hardest unit to build out of all the ML5 stars in the game. Mine's not built at all because I um, can't really build her. Uh, I just don't have the gear to do it. Despite being a unit with a CR push and attack buff, you know, ex really high damage and everything, extinction and the like, as uh, she is just too difficult to build and doesn't quite do enough for your um, team that other units just can't do like already. Zio, uh, Zio is the final unit here that we'll look at that is in the top tier and my god, Zio is maybe the best unit to pick up. Like, it's debatable between him and Brian Witch Iseria in terms of like which one will be better overall in the future. But even in the meta where you have uh, tank down, slower players, right, counters, all the rage, getting the first turn guaranteed is still very, very, very strong and always will be strong forever. So Zeo will basically be good forever. Build him on damage, build him on effectiveness if you want to cleave. A um, lot of stuff you can do with him. Just a great unit to have. So now some units that I, I don't really have built that much. Uh, Blood Moon Haste needs a buff. I think Smilegate doesn't even know he's he exists anymore. So yeah. Death Deal Array. Getting a buff soon. Right now he's not really that good. Will it be better after his buff? I don't know. Maybe. Now I want to talk about some of the units I do not have. So, a Tywin is the first one, and a Tywin right now is being used mostly because of his passive, because it's really, really good against Knockwall, because he can just cleanse off the debuffs. However, it's only once a turn, and you can kind of overwhelm his team with debuffs if you have enough of them. The other one is going to be his S3, which is uh, AoE Stun and AoE Defense Break, which is very, very strong, ignores ER um, if you have Rage, which is also very, very powerful. Uh, I don't think he'll ever be like a top top unit anymore, but will probably always be a very good unit in the future. Twisted Island Kairon, um, a, a unit that I've only seen a couple of times, so I don't really have a lot of experience finding him. He seems decent, right? Like, in the right spots, he's basically a must ban and can carry an entire team. If he doesn't have enough ER, he can, he can just kind of like die to AOL and stuff like that. So you do have to be careful in when you pick him up and in how you draft him. Architect Laika, basically a, for a while, she seemed to be like a better Straze, um, as you could get the target AOE and like almost guarantee kill something. Um, it's actually kind of interesting now because I'd actually think that Straza is actually better at the moment. So it just really, really depends on the current meta. Again, with a combo of them together, very hard to deal with, especially in certain like um, playstyles. A little bit weaker at the moment, I would say, but still going to be a powerful pick if he can get her in the right spots. DJB is one of those weird units where. Maybe like a year or so ago, he was so good. He was so powerful. Uh, but now he sees no play at all. And I honestly don't know why. Um, I think that like more aggressive like pushers like saying Moon Bunny are just stronger because they do a little bit more to counteract things that are being played right now. But if things like berries, stuff like that ever come back, DJB will be a pretty good option to have. Op 6. Speaking of barriers though. Um, Opsig was buffed a long time ago to be anti-FCC, and she really never saw that much play. When FCC was at her height of her power, Opsig was used occasionally, but still not quite as much. Uh, there were just better things that cleave teams can do to, um, to fight you, to, to like fight um, against you, and Opsig kind of got left off the wayside. 
I also just realized that one of my units that I have was in my waiting room or whatever, and that was Closer Charles. So Closer Charles not getting the Awakening buff, uh, more of an aggro unit actually versus a cleave unit in my opinion. A pretty fun character to use overall, um, just not great. And that's probably why he was getting the Awakening buff, well was. And finally, we have Requiem, Requiem Rowana. If Cleave is ever good again, this is a unit that you'll want on your roster. Uh, it, it depends, like if you do Cleave and you, and you don't have her, she's probably the, the unit that you are picking up. Um, very playstyle specific, I would say. Uh, very strong in Cleave, when Cleave is good. Right now Cleave isn't good, so it's not that good right now. Now keep in mind too, that naturally, a lot of players started putting immunity on like all of their units and immunity pretty much like hard counters her. So just be aware of that, right? She's definitely more of a meta call than anything else. I hope you enjoyed this little tier list on the headhunt coming up. I will have other tier lists coming in the future, so be ready for those also. Anyway, I'm Wild Neptune. It's been a good one. Nep out.